we are discussing the different components of a robotic system and we have seen that uh, the robot is having base links and joints and the next is we have got some sort of end effector or the gripper. Now, this end effector or the gripper the purpose of using the end effector is to grip that particular object which I am going to manipulate and this particular end effector or the gripper. So, that will be connected here not shown here in this particular the sketch. So, the gripper will be connected here. The next is your this gripper or the end effector I will be discussing in much more details after some time. The wrist joint, so this particular joint is nothing but the wrist joint where I am just going to grip. So, this particular end effector with the, the last link of the robot. Next is your the drive system or the actuator. Now, this drive system or the actuator if you see, now let me see what type of drive system we have in our body. Like we human being uh, we are dependent on both the mechanical drive system that is with the help of your muscles and we also take the help of hydraulic system that is with the help of blood and the blood is pumped with the help of heart. So, now all such things have been copied in robotics also and in robotics you will find we have got the pure mechanical drive. Now, mechanical drive means in the form of the, the gears, gear and pinions in the form of chain drives, belt drive and so on. Now, supposing that the load requirement is more or the power requirement is more. So, what we will have to do is we will have to take the help of some sort of hydraulic drive. We also take the help of pneumatic drive using some sort of compressed air. We use electrical drive also and sometimes we combine that means, we use electro hydraulic electro pneumatic drives. So, different types of drive unit we generally use here in the, the robots. The next is actually the controller. Now, this controller is nothing but the brain of this particular the robot. So, just like our head. So, this controller contains this particular brain or the intelligence and here in the controller uh, there will be software, there will be hardware also. Now, this actually uh, 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 can constitute one robotic system all such components. Now, here if I want to make it intelligent the robot will have to collect information of the environment with the help of some sensors and that is why uh, we, we use some sensors along with the robot just to collect information of the environment and just to operate the drive units. So, that we can make this particular robots intelligent. This is once again uh, ha has been copied from human being because we have got a few sensors like we have got eyes, ears, nose, skin and all such things. We collect information with the help of these sensors take the decision on our head. The same thing is done by an intelligent robot. The information collected with the help of these particular sensors will be processed in the controller then the decision will be taken and that particular decision will be executed. This is the way actually one intelligent robot will be working. All such things will be discussed in much more details after some, after some time. So, the different types of sensors we generally used uh, in the robots those things will be uh, discussed in, in details after some time. In fact, in robots we use both internal sensors as well as external sensors. Internal sensors are used to operate the drive units. For example, say we have got the position sensor, velocity sensor, acceleration sensor, force or the moment sensor and so on. On the other hand, we have got a few external sensors which are used to collect information of the environment. For example, say we have got some sort of range sensor proximity sensor and all such things will be discussed after some time in much more details. Uh, 
Now, I am just going to uh, see uh, what are the different areas in robotics. Uh, as I told that in robotics, there are four distinct modules, like these modules are coming under the purview of different disciplines. For example, say we have got the kinematics, dynamics and sensing, which are coming under the umbrella of this mechanical engineering. Now, in kinematics actually what we do is, we try to consider the motion, the relative motion of the different joints, different links, okay. but we generally do not try to find out the reason behind this particular your the, the, the movement or this relative movement. And that is actually done in can dynamics. So, in dynamics we try to find out how much is the force required if it is a linear joint, how much is the moment or the torque required if it is a rotary joint. So, all such things are mathematically determined uh, in dynamics. And in sensing, we try to collect information of the environment with the help of sensors. So, all such things are coming under the umbrella of mechanical engineering and uh, then comes your uh, the motion planning. So, what we do is if you want to intelligent make intelligent these particular robots. So, what you will have to do is you will have to make some planning, we will have to plan the course of action and we take the help of a few motion planning algorithm. Now, if you see the literature a huge literature is available on robot motion planning using both traditional as well as soft computing based approaches. So, here in this course basically I will concentrate only on the, the traditional uh, approaches of motion planning and those things will be discussed in much more details after some time. But the purpose of using motion planning is to decide the course of action that means, depending on the input situation. So, what should be the output, how to decide that that is the purpose of your the motion planning. Now, then comes your the artificial intelligence. So, as we told that we try to copy the human brain in the artificial way using the principle of the artificial intelligence. Now, to design and develop the suitable brain for the robots, we will have to uh, model the human brain, the human uh, uh, intelligence in the artificial way using the principle of artificial intelligence. And once again, this artificial intelligence is a very big area of research and distinctly there are two groups of algorithms, one are called, one is called the traditional AI techniques and we have got the non-traditional AI techniques that is called the computational intelligence that is the artificial intelligence using the principle of soft computing. So, using this principle actually we can make a plan depending on the, the requirement, so that the robot can be made intelligent and it can take the decision and execute that particular task depending on the, the requirement. Now, all such things are coming under uh, the umbrella of computer science. Now, next comes your the control scheme. Now, supposing that to perform a particular task, so my motion planning algorithm has given some decision which has to be executed. So, how to execute? So, what we do is at each of the robotic joint, we use some motor, generally we use DC motor and to control these motors, actually there should be controller. So, definitely the robot should have one control architecture and one control scheme has to be used to control this particular robot in a very efficient way. And these control schemes and its hardware implementation are coming under the purview of your electrical engineering and your uh, the, the electronics engineering. Now, here actually uh, to develop the robots uh, definitely we will have to have very good knowledge of the general science like physics, mathematics 
because we will have to use the principle of physics and mathematics very frequently to design and develop the robots. Particularly, if I want to design from kinematic point of view, dynamics point of view. So, lot of mathematics, lot of physics I will have to use. Similarly, if I want to design and develop suitable sensors for this particular robots, we will have to use the basic principles of physics. All such things I will be discussing after some time in much more details. Now, that means, your if somebody wants to become a true expert of robotics, so he or she should have at least some basic fundamental knowledge of all these particular the fields and that is why the robotics is little bit difficult and it is bit difficult to become a true roboticist. Now, I am just going to concentrate on once again the different types of joints which is generally used in robots. I have already mentioned that basically we use two types of joints, one is called the linear joint and another is called the rotary joints. Once again the linear joint we have got basically two types, one is called the sliding joint, another is called the prismatic joint. Similarly, the rotary joint we have got the revolute joint and twisting joint. Now, each of these particular joints is having the degree of freedom or connectivity. So, by connectivity we mean how many rigid link can be connected to one fixed link through that particular the joint. Supposing that this is the input link and I have got one output link here. Now, if I want to join this output link with the input link, so I will have to put one joint. Now, if I can join only one output link to the in fixed input link with the help of that particular joint. So, this particular joint is having one connectivity, connectivity 1 or degree of freedom 1. Now, here I am just going to discuss uh, in details the joint like the revolute joint. Now, this revolute joint as I told that it has got only one connectivity and one degree of freedom, because I can connect only one output link with the input with the help of this particular the joint. Now, one very simple example of this type of joint, this type of revolute joint is this particular joint. So, this is a revolute joint. Now, here you can see that if this is the input side, this is the output link. So, this particular output link can be connected to the input link with the help of this particular joint. So, this joint is nothing but a uh, similar to a revolute joint. Now, here in this particular sketch if you see, so this is the input link denoted by i j and this is the output link denoted by j k and in between the input link i j and the output link j k, we have got a joint and that is nothing but the jth joint. So, this is nothing but the jth joint. Okay. Now, here if you see, so this is the axis about which uh, I am taking this particular the rotation and the axis of the output link is nothing but this and they are at 90 degree and that is why. So, this is a typical example of the revolute joint. Now, let us see how does it work to explain its working principle. So, this is the input link that is the output link and here I have got a fixed offset that is denoted by d j fixed. So, this is the fixed quantity and so this particular output link can only rotate with respect to the input in this particular direction okay. and this rotation is, is given by. So, this particular theta j and this theta j is nothing but a variable. So, here so theta j is known as the joint angle. So, this is known as the joint angle and this joint angle is nothing but a variable here for this particular the revolute joint. Now, one second if I take this particular example as I told that this particular joint is a revolute joint. 
Now, this angle the included angle the moment I rotate this input link with respect to my output link. So, this particular angle is going to vary and this angle is nothing but the joint angle. So, this is a variable for this revolute joint. So, this is the example of this particular the, the revolute joint. Now, then comes your the prismatic joint. Now, before I go once again for this particular this this prismatic joint, let me just tell uh, let me tell you one more thing. Now, here I did not discuss the twisting joint that is another uh, type of the rotary joint. Now, I am just going to uh, show you one very practical example with the help of which you can find out the difference between. So, this particular the revolute joint and the twisting joint. Now, I am just going to take one very simple example. Let us concentrate on the joint which you have at this particular neck, our neck. Now, with the help of this particular joint, I can rotate my head in two different ways. For example, say this is nothing but my fixed link and supposing that I am just going to rotate the head. So, this is actually the axis about which I am rotating my head and this is something like this. So, I am just rotating my head something like this and here in this particular rotation, this is the axis about which I am rotating my head. Okay. So, this is one rotation and I am just going to rotate my head in another way. So, this indicates the axis about which I am taking the rotation. So, here in this particular rotation, so I am able to rotate my head like this. So, if I rotate my head like this, so my output axis of the head is here and this is the axis about which I am taking the rotation. So, this angle is nothing but 90 degree. So, the moment I am rotating my head like this, so this particular joint is nothing but the revolute joint, but the moment I am rotating my head like this. So, this particular joint will act like the, the twisting joint. So, this is the practical example just to find out the difference between your the revolute joint and your the, 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 the twisting joint. Now, here if I just draw one revolute joint and the twisting joint on the same uh, manipulator, I can draw very easily. So, I can draw very easily one manipulator with one twisting joint and one revolute joint. So, let me let me try to prepare one sketch. So, this is actually a robot with fixed base. So, this is a very simple robot. So, with respect to the fixed base, so here I have got a joint and it can rotate something like this. So, this joint is nothing but a twisting joint, it is a rotary joint, but here I have got another joint with the help of which I can rotate and this is nothing but a revolute joint. So, this is the difference between the twisting joint and this revolute joint. Now, I am just going to start with the prismatic joint which is nothing but the revolute which is nothing but a linear joint and this particular the prismatic joint is having only one connectivity or one degree of freedom. Now, here on this particular sketch, so this is the input link i j. So, this is actually the input link i j and the output link is nothing but the link j k and here we have got the j th joint. Now, you can see that, so this particular theta j that is the joint angle is kept fixed. Now, this block, so it can move up and down, so it can slide, it will have only the linear movement, only one connectivity, one only one degree of freedom and there could be only linear movement. So, this particular the prismatic joint which is denoted by p. 
will have only one connectivity or one degree of freedom. So, this particular your the prismatic joint uh, is having one connectivity or one degree of freedom. Now, then comes your the cylindrical joint. Now, this particular cylindrical joint is having in fact, two degrees of freedom. So, cylindrical joint has got two degrees of freedom. This is the input link i j, the output link is j k. Now, this particular block can slide up and down and at the same time it can also rotate something like this and this is called the cylindrical joint. So, here we have got one linear joint and we have got the rotary and this is a combination and it has got two degrees of freedom and that is why both theta j as well as this particular d j are kept variable. So, this is a typical example of this particular uh, cylindrical joint which has got two degrees of freedom or two connectivities. Now, then comes your the concept of your the hook joint or the universal joint. So, this hook joint or the universal joint uh, this is actually a combination of two rotary joints. In fact, here we are going to combine two such revolute joint and this particular hook joint or the universal joint has got two degrees of freedom. Now, let us try to understand the, the principle of this particular the hook joint. Now, here the input link is input link is i j and the output link is nothing but k l. Now, here you can see that we have got one revolute joint here. So, this is the axis for this is the axis for the first revolute joint and this is the axis for the second revolute joint. Okay. Now, I am just going to show you the physical concept of this particular this uh, the hook joint or the universal joint. Now, let me consider that this is a joint this is a revolute joint. So, this is the axis about which I am taking the rotation and with respect to this particular axis. So, the joint can be rotated something like this. So, it has got some theta variation here. Similarly, with respect to this, so I can have another revolute joint like this. So, here with respect to this the axis I can I can rotate something like this. So, this is another revolute joint. Now, these two revolute joint if I just connect. So, this is one revolute joint this is another revolute joint another revolute joint. So, these two revolute joint if I connect then it will form your the hook joint or the universal joint. Supposing that this is actually my input side and this is my output side. So, with respect to the input the output will have two degrees of freedom and this type of joint uh, is generally not used in serial manipulator but this is used in parallel manipulator. Now, the concept of serial manipulator and parallel manipulator I have not yet discussed, but I am just going to give a very rough sketch for this serial manipulator and a very rough sketch for the your uh, the parallel manipulator just to find out the, the difference. Now, if you see the manipulator which I just drew a few minutes ago that is nothing but a serial manipulator. Now, in serial manipulator actually all the links all the joints are in series. For example, say the same picture I can consider for the serial manipulator. So, this is nothing but a serial manipulator. So, this is another joint and here I can put one linear joint also. So, let me put one linear joint here. So, there is a twisting joint here denoted by T, there is a revolute joint here denoted by R and there is a sliding joint here say denoted by S that is a linear joint and this is actually known as T R S manipulator. This is nothing but a serial manipulator. So, this is a serial manipulator and now I am just going to draw 
a rough sketch for one a parallel manipulator, very simple parallel manipulator if I just draw. So, very simple sketch, very simple design I am just going to make. So, this is a parallel manipulator, this is the top plate for the parallel manipulator and here we have got a few joints. For example, say I can put one revolute joint here, I can put one revolute joint here, I can put one linear joint here, say one prismatic joint I can put. Similarly, at each of these particular legs, so I have got one revolute joint here, I have got one uh, linear joint here, this is a revolute joint. Okay. Similarly, I have got a revolute joint here, I have got another revolute joint here, I have got one prismatic joint or the linear joint here. So, this is nothing but a parallel manipulator. So, this is actually a parallel manipulator. Now, the reason why I am just trying to find out the difference between the serial and parallel manipulator here is as follows. So, this type of joint are generally not used in serial manipulator, but there is a possibility that in some of the parallel manipulator, this is a very simple parallel manipulator, but in some of the complicated parallel manipulator, we use this type of the hook joint. For example, in place of this rotary joint, I can put one hook joint here, I can put one hook joint here, I can put one hook joint here, I can put one hook joint here. So, this type of joints are generally used in parallel manipulator, but not in serial manipulator. Those things I will be discussing after some time in much more details. Now, then comes your the concept of uh, the, the, the ball and socket joint or the spherical joint. Now, this ball and socket joint or the spherical joint is having actually uh, the three degrees of freedom and all three are rotations. Now, here actually what you do is the input link and output link is connected to. So, one cup and cone type of this thing arrangement. So, the input link that is link i j is having the coordinates x 1, y 1 and z 1 and input link is connected here. So, this is actually connected to the, the input link okay. and the output link whose coordinates are nothing but whose coordinates are nothing but x 2, y 2 and z 2 that is connected to your. So, this part and this is nothing but is your the output link and this is link j k. Now, starting from input link i j, if I want to go to the, this link j k, how many rotations are required? Now, if I can start from x 1, y 1 and z 1 and if I can reach x 2, y 2, z 2 through some minimum number of rotation that will be the degrees of freedom or connectivity of this type of ball and socket joint or the spherical joint. Now, let us try to find out what should be the degrees of freedom of this ball and socket joint or the spherical joint. And before I do that, let me one second mention that this type of joint is generally used only in the parallel manipulator, but not in serial manipulator. Now, let us try to understand why does it have three degrees of freedom. Now, this x 1, y 1, z 1 initially that is coinciding with the universal coordinate system x, y and z and here I am just going to give some rotation about z by an angle alpha in the anti clockwise sense. Now, if I give rotation about z, my z will remain same as z. So, this will become z 1 prime. So, this will remain this will become z 1 prime, but x 1 will become x 1 prime that will be different from x 1 and y 1 will become y 1 prime 
and y 1 prime will be different from y 1, but z 1 prime will remain same as z 1. Now, I am just going to give some rotation about x by an angle beta in the anticlockwise sense. So, if I give rotation about x the original x or the universal x by an angle beta. So, I will be getting change in all x y and z that means, your x 1 double prime will be different from x 1 prime y 1 double prime will be different from y 1 prime and z 1 double prime will be different from your z 1 prime. And now, I am just going to give rotation about the universal y by an angle gamma in the anticlockwise sense. So, all three rotations will come that means, your x 1 triple prime x 1 triple prime will be different from your x 1 double prime then y 1 triple prime will be different from y 1 double prime and z 1 triple prime will be different from z 1 double prime. And now, x 1 triple prime is nothing but x 2, y 1 triple prime is nothing but y 2 and z 1 triple prime is nothing but z 2. Now, here so this x 2 is nothing but this particular x 2, this y 2 is nothing but this particular y 2 and this particular z 2 is nothing but this particular z 2. That means, starting from the input link that is x 1, y 1 and z 1. I am able to reach the output link that is x 2, y 2, z 2 and to reach that I need to take the help of three rotations and all three rotations are taken with, with respect to the universal coordinate system. That means, I need three rotation that means, your this ball and socket type of joint or the spherical joint is having the three degrees of freedom or the mobility level 3. Thank you.